What's up, guys? We're the Thralls of Metal, Shred Lord, Necrotic Nick, here to bring you another new album review. This time, we're going to be listening to Thrash Legends from the old school days, Zentrix. They just came out with their first album in 20 plus years, and we're here to tell you what we thought about it. Yep, they returned with two original members and some new ones, just to pretty much round out this tight unit. Uh, this is first album since 1996. The last album was not well received. They kind of left the thrashiness and kind of went into the groove metal territory, maybe even experimented with new metal. But their earlier albums were pretty legendary and they really wanted to recapture that. And for the most part, I think they did. I think they did a really good job, actually. You know, when we were talking about this album, the one thing that kind of kept coming up is they played it safe a little bit. Yes. I think maybe because that last album took so many chances, they figured their first album back in 20 plus years would have to be something a little bit more in their wheelhouse to yeah. make sure they reminded their hardcore fans and the older people who love them that, hey man, this is still who we are. You want to reestablish your brand and that is, while it is playing it safe, it is a good move too, especially if you've been gone for a long period of time, much like these guys. And right away, like you get that kind of classic Bay Area thrash feel. Granted, these guys are from the UK. There is a lot of Bay Area. A lot of Exodus. I hear a lot of Testament. Even some Lamb of God type, yep. some Lamb of God type riffs uh, in some of the songs, which I thought were, was kind of cool. Maybe that's their way of trying to be a little bit more modern while still holding true to their original sound. Nothing wrong with a little groove, get no. your head banging. But I love the production on this. The guitar tone in particular is very Gary Holt-esque and Which is great. I love me some Exodus. For a, I've loved him for a long time and that dude has always had this awesome crunchy tone. It's Super distinct. underrated, first oh, of all. Yeah. Most people don't even know who the fuck Exodus is or Gary Holt. Listen to Exodus. That's yeah, all I gotta say. And listen to Gary Holt if you're a guitar yeah. player. But anyway, enough about Exodus. We're here for Zentrix. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it starts off really well with the title track, Bury, Bury the, the Pain. Pain. And right away just establishes a nice thrashy fucking blast. It's just going full force. Vocally, it really reminded me both cadence-wise and almost sound to Chuck Billy from Testament. Definitely, very. That that vocalist would, if if I were interviewing him and he told me that Chuck Billy was not an influence of his, I'd call him a straight up liar. You know, the intonation, even in how he says words, too. You know, out, outside of even just the kind of gritty, throaty bellow he has, it's very, very Chuck Billy esque. I was kind of like, wow, dude, that's that's pretty spot on. <laughs> now, granted, I don't think he's as tuneful as Chuck Billy, and that was kind of one of my weaker points on this album. The vocals, while like when he did a really solid thrash delivery, just kind of a good bark. The moments where he tried to get tuneful and the you know, throw in some vocal harmonies, if your voice isn't catchy already when you're singing, you throw in a harmony, it really just doesn't. It do amplifies anything. the not catchiness. Yes. They, I did like the way though there were some clean spots of vocals, and and when they did harmonize it, they did it in a way I think to kind of help mask that his strength isn't melodic vocals. Yeah. So they did a good job keeping it from sounding really out of place, in my opinion. But definitely those clean vocals were not the strongest part of the album. No. Uh, some other issues, it does get a little repetitive, but they do throw in some different moments here and there. Like I said, instead of just going full bore thrash for a while, they'll break it down and like do some groovier parts. Uh, I particularly thought Bleeding Out, which I believe is their lead-off single on this one, has a fierce Lamb of God feel. Like It's it's just yeah, very, very crunchy, very groovy. There were uh, songs in here that actually had like a little bit of that southern metal riffing on there too, which, pretty cool. That really wasn't in their wheelhouse before. And uh, I actually really liked uh, Red Mist Descents because it kind of reminded you that punk and thrash are still very closely related, much yeah. like a band Overkill will remind us of on every album. I was going to say every single time they release <laughs> Every something. single time. Yeah, and the guitar work was really cool, man. I liked the tone, and I also enjoyed there was a lot of really cool harmonized guitar moments in this album, yep. which in the earlier Zentrix albums, those were some of my favorite things to, to hear on the songs themselves, yeah. is some really cool, interesting uh, harmonized guitar work. Yeah. yeah, the one thing I did miss, and I believe you do compare a band's current works to their previous works, I love For Whose Advantage. I think that's an awesome, underrated thrash metal album. And I loved their technical play. Like, they really, they experimented with rhythms, different time signatures and such. You really didn't get that on this album. It's very much straight ahead, full bore thrash, which is nice, but I kind of wanted some of that because I thought they were caliber songwriters. And some of that I'm sure is just you have new people into yep. the fold. So, you know, with new people comes 
their new influences and their in their personal preferences and stuff. And when you go to gel, it's just it's how it comes out. So it changes the recipe a little bit. Another stand on in here I thought was really good was the one you fear. Opening up with that cool acoustic. And ending with number, the cool acoustic. Yeah, kind of bookending. Brings it there. back full circle. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Really clever writing on that one. Some strong lead work on that one. And it has a nice, like, kind of old school gallop to it. Like, it, like almost like an Iron Maiden or uh, one of my favorite gallops were on, on uh, This Mortal Coil by Carcass. Love that gallop. And it was just a good moment there. Just kind of brought me into it because I was kind of getting a little lost. It's like, okay, this little repetitive here, but this one's like, oh yeah, this song really stands oh. out. Look what you're doing here. So all in all, I think this is a pretty solid album. It's not 100%. Oh my god, the comeback of a century, but it is a great album to reestablish themselves. And after a long, long wait, pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a three stars. I think that's pretty damn fair, and I recommend you jam it for yourself. It's a good listen. I also give it a three out of five. I really enjoyed the album, and the only critique I had, in, and I understand why it was there in the first place once again, is they played, I think they played it pretty safe to reestablish their fan base. Um, it's kind of like ACDC. A lot of people love ACDC, right? So with that being said, <laughs> is it good? Yeah. But do a lot of the songs sound kind of similar? Yeah. Yeah. So, but if that's my only gripe, that's pretty cool. It's still a great album. Yep. And. Once again, I gave it three out of five as well. So check it out for yourselves and tell us if we're wrong or spot on or really wrong. So yeah. we can be really wrong, I'm sure of it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, if you like the video, give her a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We do shit like this all the time. He's begging. <laughs> for the love of God, will you allow the poor boy to sleep in your bed? Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to sleep in your bed. Catch you guys later.